Well, it's, uh, I don't even know what day it is in February. They all have started to blur together. Um, but I've been stuck in my office for way too long. I uh, haven't been able to get outside and do anything, mostly because you can't get outside and do anything. And we're going to show you why that is here in a minute. But it's been an incredibly hard winter all across the Midwest and even into the South. And I live in Michigan, but I live in the southern part of Michigan where we have winter, we have snow, but uh, it's not like um, upper Michigan, the northern parts of the state where, you know, you, you don't measure annual snowfall in inches, you measure it in feet, and a lot of feet. Well, this winter has just been uh, unlike anything I've ever seen. We have so much snow, um, we keep getting snow, uh, we have piles in my driveway that are, you know, six six feet tall from where we've been continually plowing and so uh, back in September August and September I closed on a piece of land the only piece of land I've ever owned it's not very big 17 acres but I figured I'd come out this afternoon and check it out see what they're do deer doing if there's even any deer left on it there's not a lot of food and just kind of give you an idea of what winter's like here right now and we'll talk a little bit about whether or not this really is something lethal for deer. Um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time out there. I'm not even sure I can get back there. Um, I'll show you here in a second what it looks like that i got to try to get through. But um, it's 12 degrees and it's 3.30 in the afternoon. So this is the warmest part of the day. And we haven't seen anything above 30 degrees. And I think I read something the other day for over 40 days. That's cold. A lot of snow. So this should be fun. Yeah. I haven't gotten very far. First step I took, I'm in over my knees. I don't think you can see it very well. I'm trying to hold my camera, but yeah, she's a little, a little bit deep. Well, got to the uh, first trail camera, and this is actually on a uh, little food plot that was oats and clover. Nothing that I'd really expect to be here still. Like, it's not a late season food source, but um, there's just, there's absolutely no way, even if this was brassicas with turnips or something, there's no way the deer would get to it. I mean, I'm in. You know, honest to goodness, knee deep snow, not drifted, just actual snow up to my knees. And, you know, I'm certainly no Olympic runner or anything, but I've only went, I don't know, 200 yards. And I can feel it, man. I'm gassed from it. The amount of energy that the deer have to expend to get here where I'm standing and then to paw through this, they'll die. So, um, they're obviously not here. There's a few tracks around from deer, uh, but not, not much at all. And I guess that doesn't surprise me. I don't have a real great food source here, but what this does show you is that the only available food is 24 to 30 inches high. And if it's not above that, they're probably not getting to it. So. Um, my big plan for the winter for this place was to do a lot of habitat improvement and part of that was um, thinning out some areas to let more um, browse and um, that, that good herbaceous growth under the undergrowth get up and that is something that we all overlook I mean everybody puts all their focus into food plot food plots and you know man food plots aren't doing anything for these deer right now they can't get to them. They, they're not going to expend the energy to get from point A to point B and then dig down through this stuff. So any native type browse is what they're at. The deer tracks that I have seen have been on areas where there's something that they're eating that's up higher. And I'll try to find some to show you some examples, but you know, 
keep this in mind. I mean, who knows if we're gonna have another winter like this in a while, but even if we don't, you have good native plants that deer will eat. You can make them work to your advantage like a food plot by fertilizing them or thinning to help them grow back thicker, all kinds of things. And that's what I'm gonna do here once I get in here with something to, to work with that's not, you know, under 24 to 30 inches of snow. So I'm gonna make one more trip down the hill, see if that, check that other camera. And that's it, I've had enough. <laughs> Well, this is a one of those examples. This is a, a cedar, and I honestly can't tell you if it's a red cedar or white cedar. I don't know, but you can see where the deer have uh, nibbled on the ends of this. And um, actually, the cedar's not in great shape. It, I realize it's probably dormant, but it doesn't look real healthy. So they might not be eating it a bunch. But really, the only tracks in this bottom are around these little cedars. So this is what they're trying to. To eat on and that's not a great food source and uh, if this was northern parts of Michigan or even other places where there's not crops th this would probably be chewed up a lot more but um, within a mile there's some crop fields of this place and the deer have probably headed that way and you know they're just not living right here but you know this does go to show you that <laughs> they're gonna eat whatever's poking above the snow so you don't always have to plant clover or till up an area, you know, there's, on this 17 acres, there's the ability to produce tons of forage. It just might not, you know, might not be something you plant, it might be something native. And, you know, that's not always a bad thing, so. Let's go see if we can find this camera and slug our way out of here. <laughs> 